on this episode of Edge of the Web. The inspiration doesn't come from a vacuum. It actually comes from feeding your mind. So the only way to get inspiration is actually to um, read a lot. Yep. And that's it. Your weekly digital marketing trends with industry trend-setting guests. You're listening and watching Edge of the Web. Here and see more at edgeofthewebradio.com. Now, alongside Tom Broadbeck, here's your host, Aaron Sparks. All right. Good evening or good morning, as the case may be. (laughs) Special episode here today. Hey, we're broadcasting from Edge Media Studios, located in downtown Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, every week, we're bringing you the the latest trends in digital marketing and and marketing influencers. Uh, so check out all of our recent shows at edgeofthewebradio.com. That's edgeofthewebradio.com. We're powered by Site Strategics, uh, your your digital marketing pioneers, stretch, uh, specializing in the agile marketing methodology. And if you don't know what that is, it's it's basically results based marketing uh, on a, on a monthly basis constantly focusing on, on, on those results and be able to shift those tactics towards the benefit of our clients. So if you're interested in what we can do for you on that front, uh, give us a shout at sitestrategics.com. And that has a brand new website. If you haven't checked it out, go check it out right now. I dare you. Actually, no, no, no. Stay here with the show because this is a really cool show. I'm your host, Aaron Sparks, uh, founder and CEO of Site Strategics. And uh, with me is Tom Broadbeck, digital marketing, uh, digital media director. Why do I trip on that all the time? I don't know. It's only been a few years. A few years. Five years since I've worked here. <laughs> uh, he's, he's with the Site Strategics as well as Edge Media Studios. And uh, on the line, uh, or yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, right here with us is Jeff Bullis. He's digital entrepreneur, author, and keynote speaker. Sir, how are you doing? Hi, guys. Thank you for uh, having me. No, you're more than welcome. And he's in from the future. He is from the future. Guess where he's from? He's <laughs> he is in Australia, Sydney, Australia. Correct? Absolutely. So that's why we're in the future. So it's tomorrow today where you are. What happened? Tell us. You got to tell us what happened. <laughs> um. Well, that horse that you actually put a bet on actually won, but I'm not going to tell you its name. So, uh, <laughs> all right, fantastic. <laughs> now, 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 the wife knows I'm betting. <laughs> That's perfect. So, so thanks so much. Hey, p- check us out on all of the the podcast platforms that you listen to: iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, i uh, TuneIn, SoundCloud, Podbean, Spreaker, Acast. I don't know if we have, are on any others right now. Not until a new one pops up. All right. So if new, if you're listening to one that we're not on, let us know. Although they probably they wouldn't, wouldn't be listening they, if we weren't it, on it. Yeah. So, so there's that. <laughs> somebody who knows somebody who's <laughs> listening to a <laughs> podcast aggregator, well, let them know. Let us know, and we'll get out to them. How about that? That sounds better. <laughs> this segment is actually brought to you by SEM Rush, uh, the world's leading competitive intelligence and keyword research tool trusted by over 1 million online marketers every day to bring them the edge uh, over their competition. You see what I did there? I did. I do it every time. Every time. Got to see the edge, all right? And you got to use the tools that give you the edge. So if you want to see exactly where your competitors are, uh, their advertising online, as well as what their organic value is online, uh, then head on over to SEMrush forward slash edge of the web to get your 14-day free trial of their software. It's a fantastic tool set uh, of software, and uh, we highly recommend you check that out. Free of charge for 14 days, so check them out. All right, let's take you through the latest digital marketing news. I was very excited to start my reportings. This week's trending topics. And Jeff, we're, we're making you one of those tr- those trending topics as well. So how about that? How's it feel? Uh, very, very important. I've um, <laughs> I've just put out my tweet overnight and got my spelling all wrong. So I think that sounds good, <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> okay, you're gonna do that. Uh, two yeah. minutes in, you're gonna you're gonna throw throw a Trump, huh? Oh, I see. Yeah, it's a confefe or confefe. <laughs> confefe. Yeah, I think it's called confefe, baby. <laughs> It's bigly, it's huge. Let's let's move on. He has all the best words. <laughs> Search engine watch uh, from Amanda De Silvesto. Uh, Google just released verified consumer or customer reviews. Uh, Tom, tell us about that. So I don't know how we missed this a month ago, but uh, Google announced this new version of uh, reviews. So they have their normal customer reviews that um, are are left like your normal one does. Sure. But uh, there's a new one called verified customer review. 
And uh, with this new review, um, you have to set it up. It's through a, it's called Merchant. Uh, merchants, you have to have a Merchant Center account. Right. And so you sign up for that. And um, this is only good for people who make purchase, purchases through your website. So you have to have like an online e-commerce Oh, uh, okay. Store. So after the after this and this is um, they're pushing out the trusted they're doing away with the trusted stores, so this is kind of replacing the trusted store. So you sign up for the Merchant Center, somebody makes a purchase on your website, Google will automatically send them an email to leave a review, mm -hmm. and so you'll have customer you know, you'll have um, verified customer reviews of people who actually made purchases. So you can have a little badge oh, okay, on cool, your yeah. website uh, that but kind of stinks. It's E-commerce only, uh, you know, service industries would be nice to have a verified customer review as right. well. Um, so oh, this article kind of broke down how, how to sign up for it and, right. and uh, what, what you can do to help get some more customer reviews. Got it. So they're really doubling down on on uh, getting people into the e-commerce uh, merchant environment there. Um, so, you know, yeah, they're playing a little, I, don't, I wouldn't say it's dirty pool, but uh you know, they're certainly influencing the the use of of uh, the the merchant services for consumers, right? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Uh, so the instructions here: you sign in or sign up for a merchant center account if you don't have one. Mm -hmm. uh, you select the merchant center programs from the drop down in the upper right hand corner. Click get started, and add the survey opt in code to your website, and then it should be pretty much automatic after that. And a little bit further down, she gives three ways to how to get some more customer reviews. I think the first one is against the law, so I would I would ignore, <laughs> <laughs> I, I would ignore that one about offering incentives for reviews. I, I'm pretty yeah. sure that's against the federal law, um, <laughs> so you can ignore that one and follow the, use the bottom two that she mentions there. <laughs> well, what do you think, Jeff? What do you think about uh, these uh, online consumer these verified reviews? Um, I'm impressed. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> no. Great. <laughs> anything to create more trust for an e-commerce yeah, no, merchant is um is awesome because as you know uh that's on the web you're defined by content so uh, it's another piece of content that uh, adds more credibility and trust for a, a vendor online so uh, it's it's not going to hurt um just hope uh google makes it easy for you to do that yeah yeah i'm not sure I, it wasn't really clear um from the articles sure. i was researching about how it would look in like a Google search result page if somebody were like search for your brand, if it would uh, display differently over in the knowledge graph side right. of the things, if there's going to be two different columns there or if they're going to be mixed in, it didn't right. really say. Right. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. So they said this is about a month old news. So uh, there should how be some, that? I don't know how we missed it, but they wanted to catch up with that. So hopefully they're still working some of the bugs out. So. He probably stopped it. <laughs> as quickly as it started. Well, uh, another another news item from Matt Southern from Search Engine Journal. Google's AMP gains support from Facebook. Uh, Facebook is rolling out support for AMP as part of, of its open source instant article software development kit. Uh, the company's new SDK uh, has an extension that allows publishers to create content in the instant articles AMP and Apple News formats. So support for AMP has been, roll, has been rolled out first with support of Apple News coming in a few weeks. Uh, so... That's a good kind of a combination of efforts uh, coming out from Facebook is that they're actually going to support some other, you know, technologies that are offering speed. And, and I, I still don't like the uh, the the reduction of formatting uh, sure. across the board on all these different platforms. But uh, it is, it, you know, this is an interesting and unexpected move from Facebook, which was previously pushing its own instant articles uh, format as the only fast-loading article format uh, allowed on the network. So uh, I think they're, they're they're doing some good things here. Um, Jeff, I've got to ask you, what are your thoughts about AMP? Um, yeah, AMP is uh, all about usability, um, user experience, and that's what uh, Google's been trying to do. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's a good thing, uh, but they one of the things that actually has some implications for is uh, using pop-ups on mobiles. Um, so they're imposing that sort of standard on people that are trying to build an email list using a mobile. And I, I think you know, that's, it's, it's both good and bad. I understand why Google's doing it, um, but, where all of us are trying to uh, get as much control of our own digital assets as possible. And I think, uh, and every day it's the battle of the algorithms, isn't it really? So it's, you know, it's a battle of the algorithms on Facebook, it's a battle of algorithms uh, on Google. And, you know, even an email now, 
the imposition of it's been here around now the tabs you got to get past the tabs to get past promotions straight into the inbox so this is ongoing uh, as a digital marketer trying to make sure that you are able to achieve your goals and uh, the different platforms are all trying to do their thing so it's just a reality you just got to learn to deal with it yeah sift through it and, and also test to be able to see what really works for you i mean there is a constant kerfuffle <laughs> of, of of distraction out there they're always trying to to, to one up each other but you have to you have to play in the sandboxes that they give you right that's right exactly so you can't you can't fight city hall as they say so <laughs> <laughs> uh last uh last article from ad week um brand on, on instagram can now actually run click to message ads from david cohen tom what's this all about so basically the i'll just read here from the, the so i'll just summarize i changed my mind all right i was gonna read well, i'm gonna summarize so <laughs> basically in, in an instagram ad you can now uh, when they click on it from instagram it'll pop up into messenger and you can start a chat with them right away which is essentially what the ad is for now which i think is kind of weird because you're going from a mobile app to a different mobile app, mm -hmm. and I think that would throw some people off, uh, and then get sent right to a chat uh, with with somebody. So <laughs> I, nothing I, can go wrong there. there. <laughs> I mean, I, I think it's great for a marketing standpoint that you can get connected to a customer right away and try to solve um, solve their problems. There's lots of automated um, bot. Right. services that right. are, that are are pretty successful at being able to distinguish start out the chat and then transferring it over to a real person uh, now there's an entire cobble yeah. industry of being able to screen and 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 filter and qualify yeah uh, but it's just it's just weird i'm not sure how how it will work because i feel like instagram's more of a um a pinterest style demographic where there's a lot of um shopping type of advertising right so not, you're not really chatting for I don't. I think. I think you, pants, you don't want to be. Romp him. Yeah, you don't want to. You don't want to have that intrusion. Yeah. I mean, you're you're flipping through a lot of a lot of images, and yeah, you're in that space. You're not wanting to have that 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 type of transaction. I don't know. What do you think, Jeff? Um, it's. I think you know one of those things where they'll you know they put it out of the sandbox and they'll actually go try this out. If it works, it'll uh, yeah. uh, be great, and they'll shout it from the rooftops. If it uh, it doesn't, it'll just be slowly. Uh, it'll slowly disappear one night <laughs> while trying to tweet it. So um, yeah, just it, it's. <coughs> I don't know. It, it's very hard to tell. That's what they're doing all the time. It's about constant innovation. Mm -hmm. So everything's in beta, isn't it? Really. So yeah. so you just roll stuff out and let's let's try this. Let's try that. And yeah. Especially the big guys have got you know the money and the resources to actually go and do that. So they were constantly rolling, um, you know, they're in constant beat on just trying different stuff, and it's great. But you have to be on Instagram first. I actually got um, deleted from Instagram by Instagram with no warning last week. So that was pretty cool. <laughs> um, um, so any any idea why? Um, well, I was trying to log in because I was in Portugal and I logged in with maybe the wrong password because I couldn't remember it because. Um, I'd maybe had too many coffees or something. And I, <laughs> anyway, I, I couldn't get back in. So I, I tried to contact them and it was no response, you know, 700 million people. And of course it's like Facebook, try and contact Facebook. So yeah, um, I worked out a really cool strategy. I acted like a dead person, you know, because there's an in memoriam account you actually can contact. In other words, if you die, they, what they do is they, um, you can contact the special support line and they'll actually, uh, put up an in memoriam type thing on your Instagram account. So I acted like a dead person and they actually <laughs> responded. Oh, no. and this is a true story. So they actually responded back to me going, sorry that you've died, Jeff. And I said, oh, that's awesome because I'm actually alive and you've just deleted me by mistake. And, uh, oh. and they actually then, I said, can you forward it to the right people so actually you can actually bring my account to life go. again because I am alive. You seem to respond better to dead people than you do to live people. So, uh, we're back on line with Instagram now. Um, so if you get deleted by Instagram, act like a dead person and you'll actually be fine. Does that make your Instagram an undead <laughs> Instagram at this point in time? Uh, I'm very much alive okay. apparently now, so that's really cool. So it's great. Well, I, it's great. I hope so, because uh, I don't know yeah. who I'm talking to if that's not the case. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, true story. It happened wow. uh, a week ago. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> well, I mean, there, there's, the, there's a hint for the day, is that if you get yep. deleted... Just uh, fake like you're dead. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> well, I'll tell you what's not dead is our newsletter. Uh, yeah. So uh, if you want to join the newsletter, text to the number 22828, the word Edge Talk, and you'll be able to get signed up right then and there off of, off of your text stream. You can also go to edgeofthewebradio.com and be able to sign up for your, for your newsletter right there. And it covers everything that we're about to cover on the show, what we did cover on the show, uh, some random thoughts from Tom. Okay, I can add one next week. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just, uh, we're we're looking at uh, t-shirts. Mm -hmm. So once the, once those are finished designed, so you can be the first to find out there. And uh, we like we do we're live now on Facebook. If you're listening on our podcast, we broadcast live every Thursday. And so I send out an email of who our guest is going to be for that Thursday sure. to help promote that. So you can find out that too. That's awesome. Yep. So sign up, and you will not use your email for anything except sending you digital nuggets of gold via our email. All right. Uh, follow up with all the training topics at edgeofthewebradio.com. Uh, let's deep dive with this week's guest. Now it's time for Edge of the Web featured interview with author and keynote speaker Jeff Bullis. Well, how's that for a fried slice of gold right there? Wow, I feel important now. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, again, welcome to the show, Jeff. Uh, Jeff is a digital entrepreneur, uh, author, and keynote speaker out of Sydney, Australia area. Uh, thanks for th getting up early with us at 7 a.m. there. That's right, uh, 7 a.m. in the future. So this is Friday, and mm -hmm. if you're in America, it's Thursday. Just letting you know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> kind of creepy, man, kind of creepy. <laughs> at least we know that tomorrow's happening, yes. right? Yeah. Yeah, Tomorrow yeah. is there. So, so, so just relax, stay calm. Friday <laughs> is actually going to happen. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> Jeff started his website, jeffbullis.com, in 2009. Uh, and now has over 21 million visitors to his blog. He's the keynote speaker and was also listed on Forbes as one of the top 20 influencers of CMOs earlier this year. And congratulations for that. That is a fantastic accomplishment. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself and, and how you got your start eight years ago. Yeah, it was in 2008 and I, a friend of mine said, said, Jeff, get on Facebook. And uh, so I did. And I was sort of noticed everyone's behavior was quite obsessive. And I joined Twitter December of 2008. And uh, I noticed the same you know, type of obsession. And I went, there's something going on here. So this uh, behavior for me was uh, just sort of really, I suppose, was enlightening and I just said, wow, there's something that is happening on this web, this intersection of humanity and technology. And uh, so I decided to start a blog on it in 2009 and uh, just start writing about the social web and social media marketing because it was just something that fascinated me. And it, it, it offered a promise, I suppose, of democratizing publishing and democratizing marketing. And that promise has been well and truly delivered over the last eight or nine years. So we started it as a, you know, basically as a passion project and then it escaped the lab. Um, I was unemployed at the time, so I had plenty of time. You know, we also say in between jobs, <laughs> uh, code for yep. unemployed. So, uh, yeah, so I started and uh, a few weeks later I got a job, but what happened was I continued to create and publish uh, content and it's been a very interesting journey. Uh, I, I was a content marketer before the term was actually being used uh, back then. So, yeah, it, and I discovered a lot of things along the way that just mm -hmm. been uh, quite incredible. It's been like a box of chocolates, really. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. You're channeling, channeling your inner Forrest Gump, I see. <laughs> That's right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Were you in marketing before you started the blog or what was your um, history before the blog? Uh, I've been in tech for a long time. I was actually originally a teacher and uh, I was teaching people that didn't want to learn. Uh, they're called teenagers. Um, <laughs> so, and I just said, I can't see myself doing this until I die. So I left teaching and uh, leapt into the technology industry. And that's when the PC revolution was just starting. That was pretty exciting times. Hmm. So uh, I've been in tech since uh, the mid eighties um, in, in PCs and then in communications and then the internet it turned up in mid nineties and the same, uh, I was went, wow, this, you know, open the Netscape browser using a modem back in 1994 and, uh, said, wow, this is going to kill libraries. Didn't realize it was going to kill almost everything else. So, yep. uh, 
yeah, it. So I've been in tech a long time, uh, both as uh, an entrepreneur and also uh, as a marketing person, a salesperson. So uh, it's pretty embedded. I, I, I just love the possibility that we have at our fingertips today. That's, that still amazes me every day. Oh, it's incredible. Do you remember, uh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll challenge your, uh, how far you date back here. Uh, do you remember the bulletin board systems pre-internet? The BBS systems. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, I wasn't geeky enough to use bulletin boards, so uh, you know, I'm I'm not a programmer. Um, thanks, thanks, Jeff. Appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. So, sorry about that. I, I had heard of them. <laughs> you just stared at the BBS uh, operators at the end of the hall, going, "Oh wow, look at those geeks!" All right, thanks a lot. Anyway, I can I can I can commiserate. That's a uh, I commiserate. That's uh, that's a wrong term. Okay, so we, we, we concur. We have a little little bit of uh, 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 expertise there, at least uh, uh, longevity in that space. So uh, you're a digital entrepreneur, author, and keynote speaker. Uh, which do you spend most of your time on? Um, in terms of activity and mm -hmm. resources? Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it ebbs and flows a lot. So uh, content, we're a, we're a hybrid educator publisher i suppose that's the best way to describe the business we're in so we both promote our own products and other people's uh, digital products like online training mm -hmm. uh, we also devote a lot of time to creating content and um so but on the other hand we also have a lot of guest authors that write for the blog as well i realized that creating content on my own wasn't going to scale very well so we started to invite about three or four years ago invited uh, other authors and, and writers to actually participate on the blog. And that's been really good because you get a whole range of different voices and opinions about topics in the digital marketing and entrepreneur space. So content creation is very much a big part of what we do. And then it's the optimization of that and making it spread. So, you know, content's great, but you've got to make it move. And that's, yep. and that's, that's what content marketing is all about. It's two words, content and Man. marketing. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of people think that it's just content, so it's just going, people are going to discover it. But, you know, I think the latest number I've heard is there's one billion websites and counting. So, mm. uh, but there's some real challenges with the web because we're moving from an internet of websites to an internet of apps and platforms. So there's an ongoing challenge as a website and blog owner right. uh, to actually make sure that we don't get, you know, sucked into the vortex called Facebook and just never come out. And, uh, the reality is that uh, we are moving in that direction, but I, you know, and then control as well. So Facebook has got a lot of control. The big duopoly of Facebook and Google, uh, that's a challenge for everyone. I think 90% of all the digital uh, advertising growth has happened between those two platforms in the last 12 months. So, but you've got to, you know, that's the place we play. So you've got to learn to play the game. So that's Absolutely. the reality. No, no, I'd so, agree with you. I would agree with you. So, yeah. So content's the main place, but a lot of marketing activities that wrap around that. I also, uh, this, especially this first six months of this year, spent a fair bit of time um, traveling mm -hmm. and speaking. So I've uh, been to the States a couple of times just to check to see that you guys are behaving yourselves. And, um, <laughs> and, and you're not, by the way, I'm just letting you know. Uh, uh, and you, you've got some real serious issues there, I think. You know, I don't know like, what you're uh, talking about, Jeff. <laughs> Um, well, uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure. I, I, I just, there's a guy that starts with D, I think his name. Um, what is it? Um, Dino, uh, is it Tex? Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's Dino Tex, our, our, yeah. uh, our, uh, our country mascot. Exactly. Tyr Tyrannosaurus Rex. That's it. I think it's, um, that's the one. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we'll do a bit of traveling and uh, just went to been speaking in Portugal as well. And that was a fa fabulous people, fabulous country. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, they don't tweet much, so that's, that's fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so so, so I, I got to ask, why did you decide to start a blog? And was it always about marketing itself? Uh, I asked myself, it's a very good question. Why did I start the blog? Um, I suppose I was bored at the time. I just decided to start writing. No, it, it, I suppose the real reality behind it was um, I was fascinated by this social web and I came upon a blog post by HubSpot that said, if you have an inkling of what you want to start a business about or mm -hmm. uh, write about, start a blog. 
And I'd, I'd just read Tim Ferriss's Four Hour Work Week, which yep. sort of inspired me to create some form of online business. So I wrote a really extensive business plan. Um, um, three words was the length of that business plan start a blog <laughs> and, uh, and uh, so it, it became a passion project and that's uh it's just, how it started. it's just because you didn't want to rewrite your business plan that's why right yeah my teacher <laughs> said to me write your business plan I said damn it i'm gonna just write a blog <laughs> um so um i started writing about my observations about social media because i found it fascinating and uh that little passion project sort of escaped the lab and uh, became a, a serious business. And I started getting invited to speak all around the world. I remember got asked to speak in Italy and mm. New Zealand and, and they actually said, Jeff will pay you some money to do that. I went, Oh, that's awesome. So, um, and I'd found a job by that time and I was, you know, creating the blog late at night. And then I discovered that uh, early in the morning was actually not a bad time. So for four years, I got up at 4.30am and wrote till 9am and then hit the publish button. And I did that for four years. Oh, wow. Every day. So, so I'm slightly demented, crazy and twisted, but that's okay. It seems to work on the web quite well. So uh, I, that's what happened. I had this idea about writing about social media because I found it fascinating. And, uh, and then as I started to create content, the world showed up and that's been why I call it a box of chocolates because I just created, distributed my content and yeah, it, the rest sort of just, it became a, an amazing project that escaped the lab. So that's oh, fantastic. where it came from. Yeah. Well, that's organic, uh, not to be too cliche, but I mean, that's exactly the, the best story that you could have is that you, you put in the diligence, you put in the passion and the yep. world noticed. Um, yep. so what were some of the struggles and the lessons that you've experienced along the way? Um, I suppose the struggles were sometimes coming up with the ideas of content. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, what do I write about? Sometimes I'd get up in the morning and I'd have some ideas about what I want to write about and I'd start something and I'm going, uh, this is not working. And I then flip to another topic and sometimes a real struggle. And I really was on a mission most every day to actually get something out. So, and then trying to create content of consequence that made sense and was, you know, worth sharing. And cause I think a lot of people really struggle with, like they create something, but they don't put it out there because they're afraid of being judged by, you know, their audience. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's, it's that thing about being vulnerable. And I think that, is a big thing, especially for those of us that got the perfectionist gene, because that perfection is the actual <laughs> enemy of fun. And, and that's, but as a blogger, you know, you don't have to have it be perfect, you know, it has to be good enough, but you need to put it out there um, and start that conversation with the planet. And that's what I found just absolutely amazing is that the social web gave me that power without permission. I didn't have to you know, beg for permission. Right. Um, I could actually just create my own content and start the conversation and, yeah, it's organic uh, is a real, is a challenge. It's getting, and organic's actually getting harder because we mentioned before the, the, the battle of the algorithms, you know, whether it's Google, whether it's Facebook, whether it's Instagram or Twitter, mm. everyone's filtering you now. So, and um, you know, the email now, you just can disappear into the trash box because, uh, and, and you know what's really interesting mm. is that Google, um, if you, we, I use Google Drive in our business, right? So if one of, one of my, um, one of my employees, uh, Ma, she actually sends me like a Google drives update and guess where Google's own drive email goes into trash. So it's amazing that Google itself actually can't conquer, conquer its own algorithm. So that's really fascinating, but, um, <laughs> yeah. So what are the, so you ask me what are some of the other challenges? It's, well, sometimes that getting up in the morning, but, uh, but I think we need to work on creating habits, um, Oh, you and just got to stop drinking the night before, Jeff. I mean, I'm, I'm just saying. Yeah, well, that's, that's true. Actually, well, <laughs> that makes me get up early, actually, because I'm not sleeping well. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, there's a, lot, there's a few challenges, but I think getting inspiration for your content is one of the biggest ones for, for many of us. And uh, I, I love the quote by Stephen King. He said, how do you write, you know, uh, how do you write a 130,000-word book? And he said, one word at a time. And mm. he said... Uh, but the other reality is that um, 
the inspiration doesn't come from a vacuum. It actually comes from feeding your mind. So the only way to get inspiration is actually to um, read a lot. Yep. And that's it. Um, or, you know, go and watch TED Talks or uh, watch videos. But, you know, basically give yourself uh, the food that you need to actually inspire you to create content. And give and, yourself permission to, to, to have that time to absorb that because there's such a – a cacophony of sounds and, 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 and people are moving so quickly. You do need to give yourself time to learn. And that's what you're saying right. is to be able to absorb that in so many, and then we're so, uh, we're, we're different. Our, our, our learning patterns are so different. I mean, I'm, I'm listening to audiobooks all the time because that's how I really do process a lot better. And yeah. I'll use a book, a book to be able to bookmark what I'm hearing. So, so I've got some cross reference, cross reference, but a lot of people learned just from the video platforms and and, and the the written word. I mean, there's so many different ways to absorb, but you got to give everybody, you got to give yourself time to absorb this stuff. Yeah, and everyone's got different modalities. Like you said, you listen to audio books, and right. uh, whereas for me, I prefer to read because I can skim and scan actually quite quickly. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, for me, listening to a watching a video, for example, or a podcast that might be 30, 40 minutes long, I actually have to sit and go through the entire thing. Sorry, this is a podcast, I know, but <laughs> this, it's just the way I, I consume information. So I could pick, I suppose, the main points out of uh, a written document much quicker than listening for 40 minutes to try and find those jewels mm -hmm. of wisdom. So, But we're all got different modalities. My son, who's slightly dyslexic, actually he can't read very easily um so he's youtube for him is an absolute godsend mm -hmm. so yeah i we all got different modalities and i think just trying to find which one suits your own way to consume content and learn is great and I, and there's one thing i've really learned as well about um this habit of creation i think it's really important for us as human beings is to actually create is to have this habit of creation um, I was reading a book and it was recommended to me at a mastermind event in Phoenix last year. It was a book called Deep Work by a guy called Cal Newport. Hmm. And he mentioned that a lot of us get trapped in what we call shallow work, which is, you know, the busyness of responding to emails, of, you know, doing projects, attending meetings, which a lot of us do, you know, when we work for companies and for ourselves. Um, but he talked about the importance of doing deep work. And as I read it, I realized that that was what I've been doing for the last four years was deep work. And as yeah. I sat down and created and, and gave myself that time and invested in myself every day from 4.30 to 9, I actually was doing deep work, which mm -hmm. is reading, researching and creating. And when you do that every day, that the, res the result of that is a body of work that is yours. You've invested in yourself. And I think that's really important to understand. And especially as most of us are in the knowledge industries uh, these days is that that is so important. Cause a lot of people will get to the end of their maybe working lives or uh, they might even lose their job and they walk away from the corporation and they've invested in the corporation or the company. Mm -hmm. But what have they invested in themselves? Where's their creation? Let show me it. And it's buried between their ears, but I can't see it visibly. And that's why it's important to really, uh, I think, all of us to become creators and to be sharing that with the world. Well said. Well said. Well, uh, you're 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 sharing again with the world. You're working on your next book, right? Yep. So, uh, what's it all about, and when's it scheduled to release? Uh, we're looking to release it the end of this year, and uh, it's sort of on that topic of of being creators, and then. Uh, basically creating a business and a lifestyle, business lifestyle out of that. So um, it's something I passionately believe about because that's been my journey. And mm. I think it gives you a freedom of soul and a freedom of, <laughs> of life and of business um, and revenue that um, taps into our creativity. And I, I think that's a message that needs to get out. So um, that's what it'll be essentially on. I won't reveal the topic of the book because that's a work in progress, but um, it might be called, uh, no, I'm not going to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're certainly going to let us know whenever that comes out because we want to be able to talk to yeah. you about that. And we're, we'll deep dive into, into, in, into what you write. And uh, I'm certain that you're going to be putting put together an audio book as well with that, with that content, right? Yep, absolutely. It'll be in a few modalities. <laughs> <laughs> you only get four times you use that word. Now, do you understand? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs>
So you got you got a uh, uh, 101 tips and tactics uh, ebook out there on how to grow web traffic. Would you mind uh, talking to a couple of these these tactics? Yeah, uh, not a whole, all, not all 101. <laughs> no, I won't, I, I won't take you down that rabbit hole. <laughs> Well, because you'll actually will arrive in the future by the time we finish that. Um, that's called Friday. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that for me, uh, the promise of the social web, especially um, eight, nine years ago, was you could actually earn traffic. So uh, I realised that growing a following on Twitter and uh, on other social platforms was really important to you know, get that attention to my content. Mm -hmm. And so I decided to actually start growing my Twitter following. Um, uh, I also started to automate as well, uh, early on, I actually was, and I used a platform called social oomph to actually send tweets out mm -hmm. and you could load up evergreen content because evergreen content doesn't date easily. And you, so I tweet every 15 minutes. And when I started doing it about six years ago, I was, you should have seen the, uh, you know, the noise online on my Twitter account. How dare you automate Twitter? Mm -hmm. And, um, so I got a lot of stones, you know, virtual stones thrown from the sidelines going, you're evil, Jeff, you're actually automating marketing. And I went, yeah, that's fine, but it works. Um, I'm adding value. I can actually be sending content out when I'm sleeping because um, the world's a 24 seven environment now. Mm -hmm. And guess what today? The world is full of marketing automation platforms. So uh, hmm. that was one of the things I learned early on was actually to automate um, and also to use technology to get my content out. And um, I think Twitter for me was my, I suppose, secret source. And uh, today I still use that tactic. Yeah, the filters on Twitter are sort of there as a bit, but still it's much more open platform than Facebook, which actually almost restricts any content organically, yep. um, unless uh, your name starts with T. So, um, <laughs> so that's, you know, that's one of the tips is basically grow your, you know, tribe online and also um, continue to invest in your digital assets. And one of the other ones we actually um, use is uh, email. We grow our email list. Mm -hmm. uh, we worked on that last two years uh, a lot. Uh, we put in place marketing automation platforms. And so yeah, it's, and also create the best content you possibly can. And that's an ongoing journey. And uh, then there's things like, learning to use new tech and also you know, hooking to the latest trends. So yeah, it's, it's, it's an ongoing journey. It's certainly not a static environment. What a robust set of tips. Uh, so why did you write that book, uh, that ebook? Um, it, it started when I wrote a blog post and I realized that uh, I just wanted to share sort of all the sort of, I suppose, get what I'd learned and put it down to mm -hmm. um, a book. Um, and we give that away for free. And the reality is that uh, it's a great lead magnet. It's uh, actually absolutely. quite a long book. It's 55 pages, I think. Yeah. So Holy Hannah. Yeah. So it's 12,000 12, words, 55 pages. And it's yeah, got a lot of great value. But it's essentially how to uh, double your traffic without paying Google or Facebook a cent. So, uh, yeah, it's just an insight into organic and earned traffic without having to uh, pay Facebook or Google. Oh, in, in that book, uh, you, you, you said you, your primary goal should be to convert paid and earn traffic into owned traffic, right? Yep. Yep. So, so how do you do that? Well, okay. So what we do is something people seem to love eBooks, right? Free ones, especially. Mm -hmm. So, um, so we use that free book, 101 plus traffic tips to actually get people to hand over their email and it's an exchange of value. Mm -hmm. So, uh, they get a great piece of content. That's, uh, you know, content of consequence, as I call it, that, uh, then in return, they do a small commitment and that's, uh, they will give you your email and response. So that way then we can communicate with an audience. So that's, so you've earned the attention maybe from Twitter. So you put it out on Twitter, you've earned the followers and then as much as you can own traffic, you, you build your email list, which means that you actually can generate traffic from your email list and uh, also make money out of it. So earning uh, followers on Twitter or on social networks, um, earning authority also from Google's search engines, that's also earned um, traffic. And today, 55% of my traffic comes from organic search engine traffic. Oh, yeah. And a lot of people don't realize that over time, if you continue to create 
you know, great content is that you will learn authority with Google as people start to link to your site, um, read your blog, especially if you create, you know, what I call uh, long form content. Mm -hmm. and long form content is, you know, 1500, 2000 words. It becomes a resource that people can refer to. So, and people then will link to those sorts of uh, blog posts because there is it's a deep dive into a topic. Um, so creating long form content is important in terms of earning authority with Google as people link to you. So it, it's all, a, it's, it's basically got to play a long game uh, in the digital marketing space. It's not about, you know, quick results. Uh, and if you want quicker results, well, you, you can pay for traffic and that's fine. And we all need to do that as well. But uh, you need to be constantly investing in your digital assets and earning uh, that traffic and then owning it as much as you can by building your email list. That's, 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 that's fantastic. Uh, I, I'm hearing email marketing on, on and on and on, and uh, it's a fantastic tool set. Uh, so, but why do you say, why do you think that email marketing is so important? Well, uh, it's the reality about email is that, is that you've got more of an ownership about that than, uh, Facebook, for example, like in the past, everyone was on Facebook, they generated likes and you could actually reach your audience quite easily, but then Facebook changed the rules and continues to change the rules. So organic reach on Facebook is uh, you know, so close to zero. It's not funny. Um, the reality also is that Google has its own algorithms. that makes it harder and harder to actually reach you know, the audience for free. So building an email list is one way of actually creating a tribe or a following that you can reach when you want to. In other words, if you want to reach, you know, here's your latest book come out or there's your latest product, you can basically put out an email broadcast or if you want to segment and reach particular niches within your email list. But email gives you as much control as you can um, get control online. And, and that's getting tougher because the algorithms uh, such as the tabs on you know, Gmail, for example, promotions, social, and the, and also you just disappear into trash because uh, for some tweak, you know, uh, Google will put you there. Right. So um, email is really important in terms of you know, having the easiest and quickest way to reach an audience when you need to reach them to actually maybe sell a product or uh, get your information out. Yeah. Do you have any tips on how you, you mentioned the three um, tabs within Gmail? Do you have any tips on how to get into that primary Oh, I, <laughs> pain in the ass, isn't it? <laughs> uh, it is. Yeah, I, um, I suppose just try and make it an authentic type of email. In other words, it uh, doesn't look spammy. It uh, doesn't have too many links. doesn't have a ton of images. Um, it, it, like a lot of people talk about it, and we just try different things. But you know, it's, it's about authentic content, I think, at the end of the day. Um, you might you tell people actually how to make you whitelisted is one term I think has been you know, tossed around. So... Um, for some reasons, uh, emails can appear in the norm main tab or they can disappear into others. It's a, it's an ongoing battle and it's the, no one's got the perfect answer for mm -hmm. it. Okay. Um, but, um, I certainly just use, I suppose, quite, uh, lean emails that, uh, use the right sort of words that are genuine and authentic. That's what we try and do. Do you have any testing tools, uh, to, to that particular degree that you oh. use? Uh, not for our emails so much as we, we're pretty heavy on, you know, keeping and maintaining a, a clean email list. So we're yeah. constantly, uh, doing that. Uh, we use Infusionsoft, which is uh, a good marketing automation tool, but, uh, it's, everyone's got their issues regarding deliverability. Um, so it's deliverability, hard. It's, it's just such a tough one. We don't really have tools that, um, enable us to get too much visibility on that. It's mm. just, that's really difficult. That's okay. Well, uh, to, to, to triple down on the email, what are your favorite email marketing tools? You just mentioned Infusionsoft as a marketing automation engine. What are your favorite e email marketing tools themselves? Um, we, we use lead pages a lot for part of, as part of that as well. Hmm. Um, they, uh, have, you know, like three or four years ago, I think they've only been out about four years and just amazing organization that grew so quickly. And mm -hmm. because they made it easy to create these landing pages that, um, just within a few minutes. Yeah. And a lot of people are doing that now. Infusionsoft have come out with its own product. Um, 
So lead pages are just such a great tool for actually creating the landing pages you want to actually generate leads, uh, to sell a product, mm -hmm. um, and to get people to make those small commitments. Uh, the other tools we use uh, in email marketing is essentially to create images. So I use a, a great little tool for images, which is uh, Snagit. Um, yep. We use a bunch of other tools too uh, for automation. Uh, such as social oomph, which gets puts out the tweets, which then sends out the links, which then lead to the lead page, which then generates the leads and um, builds our email list. So, yeah, it's it's this different variety of tools that all come together to create the result we want. There's not one tool that does it all, and that's and that's that's <laughs> on top of everything else. You gotta you gotta invest, invest wisely. Um, yeah. In your ebook, you also talk about partnerships and collaboration. Um, what does that mean and why is it a good idea? Um, the reality is that on your own, uh, it's tough to reach a big audience. So collaboration and co-opetition. Uh, so someone wants to launch a new product. So it, what they'll do is they'll approach a bunch of other bloggers who've got you know, large email lists. So just think about it. If you've got a list of, let's say, you know, 10,000, 20,000, and that's just your list. Let's say you've got 20,000 on your list. If you can get another let's say 20 bloggers who have a list of 20,000 then and they will actually help you promote your product and then in return you will help them launch their product you've got a list of 400,000 you can reach so this this is why collaboration becomes really really important mm -hmm. in terms of of the web and especially organically um, but that's that's why it's so important is that it actually just amplifies uh, your marketing and we, and also because the social web is so trans, well, reasonably transparent, um, apart from fake news, apparently, <laughs> um, the reality is that um, working with others and collaborating is just a great way to, in the trust economy, to actually reach a big audience. And that's, it works and it works very, very well. Uh, I'm going to take a sidebar here and, and ask you some questions regarding um, uh, fake news, because it certainly is a challenge to get that marketing moving whenever you're having this type of just inundation of, of crap that's connect, that's disconnecting enough us as marketers, true marketers from our audience is it, you've got these, these uh, environments where they're getting distracted. And, and w what do you think about the algorithms starting to uh, take hold and really move this out of the equation uh, and, and really having the, the trust network quote unquote, that will uh, vet out content uh, in, in these different platforms. What are your thoughts about that? I think it's actually pretty important. And I think that Facebook certainly can't wash its hands of, um, of all these fake accounts that are set up to uh, target interest groups. And like it's some of the dark aspects of that. Um, I recently surfaced about um, Facebook can detect uh, kids with depression and, and emotional issues, and they were allowing people to actually reach those uh, marketers and advertisers to reach those people um, and to take advantage of vulnerability. So that's, that's pretty scary stuff. Um, on the fake news side, I think you know, some of the moves, especially in Germany, I think Germany is starting to put in place some really uh, rigorous standards and trying to enforce the big platforms to uh, use technology and also to be more responsible about what they do. And I think that is a great thing because um, the open and social web is fantastic, um, but it can be used both for good and for evil. And I think we certainly have to have some checks and balances and just having completely um, using it in a way in which we use the weaknesses of others to actually uh, make money mm. is a pretty scary place. Yeah, I, I, I tend to think that we, if we put too much trust into the, the, um, the, 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 the automation and the, you know, very similar to the rank brain environment, we're going to allow so much to be, to be removed from our ecosystem because uh, we're not, we're not owning the space and, and jumping in there and, and, you know, voting it down and getting it out of the out of the way. If we're automating it too much, if we're allowing the algorithm to to take too much of our content away from us, 
uh, boy, that's like Skynet, right? And and I hate to use a reference again. We just had <laughs> we just had an entire uh, Terminator show last week. <laughs> but uh, I mean, you, you start giving away control to the bots and 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 how we read and how we how we process and consume information. Uh, boy, that's a slippery slope, don't you think? Yeah, I, I certainly think we've got to use technology with humanity um, in partnership, and I think that's really important to keep that that reality of that authenticity. Mm-hmm. And um, what amazes me, though, is that so many people um, also seem to uh, consume news on Facebook. I don't use Facebook at all for getting my news, mm. um, which, but many people do. And I, I just, for me, viewing or reading news on Facebook is not something that actually, um, yeah, I, I would have trouble trusting it. Yeah. Yeah, um, I'd agree so I think you've got to apply some common sense and, you know, and go to sites that do have trust and credibility and social proof and what, whatever you think that is. Um, but this whole fake news and environment is certainly an area that, um, that a lot of the big companies now are, are grappling with. Um, but to answer your question regarding uh, automation and taking away human aspect i think you know, it is a slippery slope and you've got to make sure that you still remain human and authentic while using the tools mm-hmm. and and that, there's always going to be that tension yeah no i would agree with you um getting back to your ebook to finish up the last thing you say i it was a very very uh, uh fa- it was a fantastic statement it is done is better than perfect so so why is that so so important for people to remember so <laughs> The thing is that about 50% of us um, research sort of shows that have a, a little bit of a perfectionist streak and that's going to stop a lot of people um, actually getting their creation out to the world and that's why done is better than perfect. If you wait to get it just right and perfect, um, you'll actually never hit the publish button. And I mean by that, I mean whether it's your product, you know, which is in, in constant beta maybe, right. uh, or whether it's your content, whether it's writing or a, a piece of art. Is, is at some stage you've got to go, okay, it's, it's good enough, I'm going to share it. Um, because I think one of the most important things to learn is that by sharing is the, is the opportunity to actually grow and learn because when you put it out there, you are going to get some judgment, you are going to get. So mm-hmm. that's what done is better than perfect. It's actually just getting your stuff out to the world and sharing your genius and your own magic with the world because um, that's – where it happens that's where things happen is when you share it well, Tom how often do you share your magic with the world every Thursday at 3 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> there you go you're, you're shipping <laughs> there it is well I, hey to, to, we really appreciate your time and and thank you so much for those those insights I mean these are key factors of how to how to succeed in digital marketing. You've got to constantly focus on the deep work and, and push content and, but also not get yourself so tied up that, that you're, that you're going in analysis paralysis for lack of a better word, get it out, get it done and, and utilize the tools that are available to you. Don't, don't just don't. Yeah. It, it's, it's content, you know, it's not print that once it's printed. Right. And then that's it. I mean, it, you can go and hit the delete button and change it and, it, yeah. It's all it's yeah. all workable. Yeah. It's, it's okay. Exactly. exactly. So yeah, I, I quite often go in after I've written something, and actually I'll make a few edits because I realise there's a small typo or mm-hmm. uh, the actual sentence I used. I want to just change a little bit. So that's the beauty of the, of the publishing tools today. Is that it's, it. uh, yeah, it's it, you can just go in and just keep tweaking it a bit. Well, you know, as we understand that you're the internal optimist. <laughs> What does bug you in the industry? You got to give me something. Uh, what bugs me in the industry? Um, I suppose everyone, one of the things in the industry is I think a lot of people get uh, distracted by shiny new toys. And I I'm, was, I guess, sometimes distracted by them as well. But, you know, the latest thing comes out and suddenly uh, this is the latest, hottest thing that's going to change the world. And I think uh, you, you got to be careful. You still don't... You, have get that distraction um, and stop getting the fundamentals done right. So, mm. um, you know, there was things that, so that's sort of chasing every shiny new toy. I just look around and go, Oh my God. So 
Snapchat is what well, it should drop everything else and just do Snapchat and going, really? <laughs> um, so yeah, I am on Snapchat, but I just, um, and it, at the moment it looks like Facebook's eating Snapchat's lunch. Um, so absolutely. Um, so it's going to be fascinating to watch. So I'm, I'm a little hearing about the latest shiny new toy all the time. I'm going, okay, good to see. Let's check it out. But, it's not going to change the world necessarily, but yeah, keep a watching eye on it and just keep doing the fundamentals. We are a very distracted, uh, knowledge based, uh, industry nowadays. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, that's, that's, that's a feeding frenzy for those shiny new toys. Is it not? Absolutely. Well, it keeps us all, uh, co- talking and communicating and, uh, you've got to have something to write about and the shiny new toys are actually, you know, great to write about. So, uh, <laughs> Yeah, it, it feeds the ecosystem. Well, so, Absolutely. So, what excites you about your industry uh, right now, and uh, what you see for the future? I I just love the ongoing um, change, um, and also the opportunity. Uh, the social web for me uh, was this incredible opportunity to uh, create something uh, from a home office, from a coffee shop. Mm-hmm. Uh, without having to uh, seek permission and uh, or pay for it. And that's that's what I found. This democratization of marketing, the democratization of publishing that we're experiencing now, you that's what you guys are doing. Yep. That's just it's just fabulous. So so we as human beings can share our uh, creation with the world. Um, and you couldn't do it like this um, fifteen years ago. No. Nope. You just couldn't do it. Um, and then on top of that, we have, you know, the rise of the smartphones, which have only been out, was it, um, since 2000, 2007, I think the iPhone came out. Mm-hmm. Um, and as Steve Jobs said, the internet in your pocket is going to tr- transform everything. And actually that prediction ended up being true. So we are just really started this revolution. So where is it all going to go? Well, that's what makes it exciting. We, we don't know all the things that are going to happen. But it's, um, I, I think as this technology is because an extension of us as human beings, it amplifies who we are as, as humans. Mm-hmm. And that's pretty exciting as well. The ability to actually amplify your humanity um, to be fully you, I, I think. Um, so this is where the thing about this t- intersection of technology and humanity comes in is that uh, technology can be used for good, it can be used for evil. And uh, that's the rise of any technology. Mm-hmm. And so... Um, that's why I'm, I suppose I'm the eternal optimist is that, uh, where's it all going? Um, I love, I'm just, I love the journey and I love the learning. That's the other thing that I enjoy about it is that it's never boring. It's always changing. There's always lots of learning. So we've got to commit to a life of continuous learning, uh, not the big bang theory of education, get a four year degree and you know, you're over that's done. Um, and you, you go to speak to, you go to your doctor and sometimes you realize your doctor actually doesn't seem to be learnt much since you saw them a year ago because their passions died. Mm-hmm. So I, I, that's why I think that living a life of passionate purpose is actually really important and technology allows you to do that. And that's what's exciting. Uh, it, it does sound like you're an a, a, uh, optimist uh, or an optimist. Um, you should absolutely check out last week's show. Uh, with Jonah uh, Alderson, he was literally talking about surviving the, revo- the the machine revolution, and it was the most depressing picture of <laughs> of uh, uh, AI taking over every point of our human existence. Trusting Google Home to order everything for us, and and basically uh, firing all the uh, digital marketers because the the, the AI is going to take over. So. Uh, <laughs> Well, maybe you shouldn't watch that show. <laughs> no, I won't. I'll, I'll, I'll get depressed. I'll become, the, I'll become the eternal pessimist. So that's a really bit scary. Really? You're that polar, huh? <laughs> no. <laughs> so, hey, you've tra- traveled all over the world. Uh, what city has some of the favorites, your favorite places to eat? Let me let me just throw this one at you. Um, favorite places? Um I went to a fantastic um, place in Portugal recently, which had an octopus hanging from the roof, not a live one. Um, that that was uh, just, uh, and they specialized in seafood, surprisingly enough. So uh, that was great. Mm-hmm. Uh, so some of the best places in the world, I think, for great food is um, 
Sydney, my hometown's just got some fantastic places. London's just amazing. Yeah. Um, the other one that's surprised me, but it's great, is uh, Helsinki in Finland. That was that's got just some awesome creative food. Um, New York, that's actually pretty cool. And surprisingly, Las Vegas has some incredible food places. Um, amongst there's one um, band that's called Slot Machine. So um, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of this, that's, and San Francisco again. That's pretty cool. Um, I'm noticing he's not saying Indianapolis, Indiana. Oh, well, he's been here probably because I, I haven't been there, guys. So I, I can't. <laughs> but anyway, I, I could make it up, but that would be fake news. That wouldn't be authentic. <laughs> it may rise to the top. You never know. <laughs> oh, the, the, uh, that's fantastic that you've been able to travel uh, all all these different places with the creation and because of the creation that you were able to muster uh, in 2008, 2009. I mean, that just is a testament to what marketing can do for a life. And uh, I congratulate you highly on uh, being able to accomplish that. And uh, any last words for uh, aspiring bloggers? Because it certainly the, the environment has certainly changed since you started doing it, right? Yep. Yeah, it's it's tougher now, um, but I would I would I would encourage all creators, whether you're a blogger or whether you're a podcaster, is to play a long game, and 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 to continue to do or start doing deep work and make that commitment. Um, I, I love the quote by uh, Bill Gates that said, "A lot of people overestimate what they can do in one year, but they underestimate what they can do in ten years," and I, I think that reality. Um, it is just such a powerful um, phrase because you just, if you show up and create, you know, every day um, and just commit to doing that deep work as Cal Newport gave a name to what um, I was doing. Right. And if you commit to that, then the world will show up and it will become a box of chocolates, but you do need to play a long game. What if you're allergic to chocolates? Um, just, you know, get some other lollies. Yeah, it really doesn't matter. <laughs> All right. Is there anything that we can, uh, thank you so much for that. That's, that's, that's quite poetic and, and, and absolutely, uh, aligned to what you've been doing, uh, your life. Um, is there anything that we can promote for you? Uh, we have a blogging mastery, uh, course, mm -hmm. uh, which, um, sort of goes into a lot of things we discussed today. Um, that's section on Udemy. Yep. Um, the other, and also the 101 plus traffic tips, I believe that adds a lot of value to people's lives. So there's a, there's a couple of things that uh, I believe would add value to, uh, you know, aspiring or would be or already bloggers and uh, creators, um, because it's about actually sharing your creation with the world. That's what it's really about. And so I, I use the term blogging and publishing. Uh, there are analogies for actually just um, being a creator. Fantastic. Well, we'll certainly, uh, we've got this on the screen and we'll certainly put this in the show notes, uh, uh, uh as we uh, publish the, uh, the, uh, podcast here, uh, the coming Tuesday, um, you can find Jeff at Jeff Bullis.com B U L L A S. Uh, you can, you can follow him and along with how many, how many Twitter followers? Uh, I've got about 535,000, something like that. Oh, you, all right. <laughs> Just a, just a few. Just a few. All <laughs> right. So uh, at Jeff Bullis dot, uh, at Jeff Bullis is on Twitter. You find him on LinkedIn at Jeff Bullis and Facebook as well. Jeff Bullis com. And then there's a string of numbers after that. What's up with that Facebook page, man? Uh, yeah, I just I was having coffee at the time and just <laughs> <laughs> dropped something on my keyboard. And, that's what <laughs> and he has a footboard account, too. Talk to us a little about that real quick. Yeah, Flipboard. It's um, it's a very cool sort of social curation publishing yeah. um, platform, and uh, yeah, it's it can generate some serious traffic, especially if you're writing about the right sort of topic. So I created my own personal magazine on Flipboard. Oh wow! Um, they have a great team in Palo Alto in um, mm -hmm. in California, just outside San Francisco and Silicon Valley. I met with the team recently, and they, yeah, it's a really cool um, or source for organic traffic. And I, at some days. Is created up to well, driven up to twenty five percent of my blog traffic um, from the platform because people read it and they click through to read uh, your article. So Flipboard's been a really uh, interesting source of organic traffic, 
And uh, I'm always looking for that those little growth hacks that help um, absolutely yeah, get that little bit more attention. Because well, of course, uh, we, we, all need it, we need a little, all need a bit of love and a bit of attention. That's called traffic online, so it's good. <laughs> Uh, it's cool because uh, Flipboard has its own loyal followers inside of Flipboard. It's a great immersive imagery uh, uh, and, and, and news mag, and you can uh, schedule up a lot of different uh, yeah. uh, 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 content to be able to make your own personal. Um, but it is a loyalist group there that use that application. I love Flipboard. So yeah. I mean, it's got about a, it's got about a hundred million, I think, users. Mm -hmm. it's, it's quite significant. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but it sort of you know sits a bit below the the radar for most um, most publishers. Oh, very cool, very cool. Well, Jeff, again, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate your your time today, uh, getting up in the in the morning and uh, sharing some of your your inspiration there. Um, we're gonna post out the the, the show here coming up uh, on Tuesday, and we certainly would appreciate some social love out there. And you know, hey, sharing is caring, right? Absolutely. And you're going to help us get our creation out to the world, right? I've already tweeted you once. You might even get another few. There we go. All right. Well, thank you for listening to Edge of the and watching Edge of the Web Radio. A special thank you to our guest, uh, uh, our friends at Site Strategies, as well as our guest, uh, Jeff Bullis. Uh, make sure to check out all the must see videos uh, and much more insider information at edgeofthewebradio.com. That's edgeofthewebradio.com. Uh, we'll talk to you next week. Do not be a piece of cyber driftwood. Take care.